You're watching Good Morning Suncoast at 5. Business owners unite in Manatee County to show solidarity against red tide. We'll have a live report. Plus, why a Parkland High School student who survived the school shooting says he won't be returning to the school this year. And a new Starbucks creation could fill both your caffeine needs and your hunger. The new product they're testing. Good morning, Sunco starts right now. You look excited already about that. Caffeine and fullness. This could be <laughs> my love of my life and a cup. Good morning. It is Thursday. I'm Ray Collins. And I'm Stephanie Webb. Thanks for waking up with us this morning. Over to John Scalzi now. We'll look at what on tap for Little Friday, as we like to call it around here. <sighs> Don't you love the, even the sound of that? Just sends shivers all up and down my spine. A lot like yesterday, I think is what the name of the game is for today. A lot like yesterday. We'll have a pretty quiet starting, uh, start of the day. Morning commute should be just fine. Maybe an isolated sprinkle, but the, really the rain chance about 10%. That's about it. But later on in the afternoon, inland will start to see showers and thunderstorms form. As you saw on radar, there's really not a whole lot going on right now. We have temperatures that are generally hugging the mid-70s, upper 70s as you get closer to the coast. And the rain chance today will hold at about 30%, similar to yesterday. Inland storms build later in the afternoon and then drift off to the northwest. Complete forecast in a second. Talk to you soon, John. Little blip there on State Road 70 as you approach 301. Otherwise quiet so far in Manatee County. Farther south, the northern half of Sarasota County will show. Nothing much to report so far in the red. Pretty clear at 501. And then our final map to the south. Nothing to report. We'll keep you posted in 15 minutes. Well, it is still a big issue here on the Sun Coast. We're talking about red tide. That toxic algae bloom has impacted not only water and wildlife and local beaches, but also restaurants and tourism along the Gulf. Our Marla Spence joins us now live from one restaurant where business owners will be gathering in Bradenton. Marla? Hey guys, I'm live here at Swordfish Grill and Tiki Bar. And as you can imagine, just like this business owner of this restaurant, many other businesses on or near the Gulf has seen a huge decline in sales within the past few weeks due to red tide. Now today, many business owners across the Sun Coast will be meeting right here to stand in solidarity against the toxic algae bloom. Now, just yesterday, folks met here to talk about the effects of red tide and how it has on their business. Now, this is something that businesses and local politicians will be doing all week long. Now they also met to make sure that everyone is aware that restaurants are open despite red tide. We spoke to Robert Ball, who is the CEO of Child's Group. His group runs three restaurants on the Sun Coast. Now he tells us he wants customers to know that when they dine at local waterfront restaurants, they are supporting local fishermen. We want to get a message out that uh, we understand that red tide is a natural phenomenon, but we're open. Uh, the winds change, uh, the beaches are beautiful, there's people in the water, and that we are open for business. Now we're told businesses have seen a decline in sales well, of, of between 30 to 60 percent, which is probably a chunk of change for those businesses. Now those business owners will be meeting right here at this restaurant at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Reporting live in Manatee County, I'm Marla Spence for ABC7, your Suncoast News. We did a survey of the tourism industry to see how business was August 1st through 7th. And unfortunately, as the responses are coming in, it's getting more and more negative. Uh, we're up to about a 6% business loss. Now that's more than $500,000 of estimated losses for businesses in the county. Tourism leaders are now faced with the problem just how to bring back and reassure tourists scared away by the red tide because of the local state of emergency. About half a million dollars is now in place to help areas hit the hardest economically by the effects of red tide. Small businesses in both Sarasota and Manatee counties can now apply for special interest-free disaster loans. And scientists at Moat Marine are testing something new that they believe may help get rid of red tide. They tested a machine this week in Boca Grande after months of testing in their laboratories. It uses an ozone treatment system to kill red tide cells that are in high concentration. It processes almost 300 gallons of water per minute by breaking down the toxin infested water, injecting it with ozone and then pumping out clean water. Looks like there's some great promise there. So I think it'll be a combination of physical chemical uh, technologies, using innovative technologies, and using some of Mother Nature's own natural approaches to this 
but doing it in a, in a targeted, more efficient way. So I think, there, I think there is great hope on the horizon. We just need to keep moving forward, and science and technology are going to help us achieve um, the answer and the response that we need for red tide. This testing process will last three to four more days at Boca Grande, and then Moat Marine will give us an update on the results sometime next week. And of course, for all of our latest coverage on the Red Tide outbreak, and to get the answers to your most asked questions, just head online to mysuncoast.com. A student who survived the school shooting in Parkland says he won't be returning to school this year. Anthony Borges says he's still recovering after the February shooting at Stoneman Douglas High School. The 15-year-old saved the lives of several students when he used his own body to block a classroom door. He was shot several times. The new school year began yesterday, but Borges says he won't be back because he still worries about his safety. I'm not ready for, for going because it's dangerous for everyone. Nobody wants to get shot and maybe it's a uh, Another Nicholas Cruz over there. Borges has undergone several operations with more on the way. And now to Colorado, where a husband is now under arrest days after his pregnant wife and small children went missing. Now, at first, he said he left for work and it was the last time he saw them. Now, police say he's confessed to killing his family. Andrew Spencer has a story. A handful of stuffed animals, a candle, and a small cross planted outside the home of Shannon Watts and her two daughters early this morning, all three of them missing since Monday. Even as investigators searched for them earlier this week, Shannon's husband was pleading for their safe return. If you're out there, just, just come back. Like, if somebody has her, just please bring her back. Chris Watts spoke to reporters on Tuesday about the disappearance of his family. I need to see everybody. I need to see everybody again. This house is not complete with, without anybody here. Please bring it back. Investigators returned to the family home last night and searched the house. Overnight, the Frederick Police Department issued a release saying Chris Watts had been arrested in connection with the case just days after he said this. I just want them back. <laughs> I, just, I just want them to come back. And if... If they're not safe right now, that's what's, that's what's tearing me apart. Because if they are safe, they're coming back. But if they're not, this, this, this has got to stop. Like, somebody has to come forward. I'm Andrew Spencer reporting. A Milwaukee bus driver is being called a hero this morning for rescuing a toddler in the middle of the street, and it was all caught on camera. Let's watch this. Diana Serrano says she saw the two-year-old while driving Saturday the girl was alone and not fully dressed. Now, bus cam video shows Serrano helping the little girl onto the bus. There, they waited together for police to arrive. Pretty frightened. She yeah. had tears rolling down her face. And, you know, she, she was a tiny girl. So she probably was very confused, too. The girl's mother says she was sleeping when the girl snuck out. Milwaukee County Transit authorities say this is the eighth time a driver has helped a lost or missing child in less than two years. The chief of police at SRQ for the past decade is leaving. James Carlino's last day will be August the 31st. No airport officials say Carlino is leaving to pursue teaching opportunities and work more in the private sector. But the resignation also comes as Carlino had been the target of a misconduct investigation at the airport. Thousands of Elvis Presley fans are taking part in a candlelight vigil this week at Graceland in Tennessee. Today is actually the day that Elvis died 41 years ago in his home in Memphis. Thousands of fans are holding a vigil, an annual vigil at the home. The home is called Graceland. A series of events are also planned this week there. He is also buried at Graceland. Elvis died of a heart attack at the young age of 42. And finally, don't have time for both sweet, sweet caffeine and your breakfast? Well, Starbucks is hoping to help you out with their latest creation. They've introduced a new protein blended cold brew this week. It's made with, as you would expect, cold brew coffee and plant-based proteins. Uh, proteins. You can feel more full, right? Yeah. You can add different fruit and flavors and even extra protein to keep you feeling full all day long. Now, if you want to order one of these, a grande size averages about 270 calories and contains about 10 grams of protein. <laughs> I'm good with all of that. All right, 509 <laughs> right now. Still ahead on Good Morning Sun Coast. One family finally has closure this morning after the remains of a soldier were returned and identified.
And later in the hour, how the Vatican is now responding to the reports of that massive sexual abuse and cover-up in Pennsylvania. We'll tell you what they're not saying this morning. But first... Well, John Scalzi says it might seem awfully familiar. Deja vu today, a lot like yesterday, huh, John? All over again. Yep. Yeah, it looks that way. Uh, we'll probably have a little bit better rain coverage this afternoon and evening along the Seabreeze front and inland areas. That's why I've checked the rain box today. But uh, honestly, I don't think it'll be a big difference to coastal residents. We'll look for temperatures that'll be in the upper 70s for your commute out to work and on the way back. A few inland thunderstorms will be around. All the area hubs for Sarasota International Airport are um, running on time, according to the FAA. We'll have a complete forecast for you in a sec. When ABC7 declares a first alert weather day, it means we can expect major changes to weather conditions here along the Sun Coast. It means it could be severe, potentially dangerous weather ahead. We tell you when a first alert weather day is coming because we want you to be prepared. A first alert weather day is an advance warning. We'll let you know about any changes in the weather when the first signs appear. ABC7 first alert weather, we're here for you. What do you get when you cross your tired, aching back with this fragile egg? The Egg Sitter Cushion, an amazing new flex cushion that supports your backside and spine so well, you can sit on an egg without breaking it. Incredible! You want me to sit on this egg? Okay. I can't believe I'm doing this. I don't even feel it. <laughs> it didn't even break? Oh, I was wondering about that. Now that's a good cushion. <laughs> the honeycomb design is constructed of elasticore that absorbs pressure points by collapsing in on itself. That's why even this egg won't break under direct pressure. Now long days at the office will be more comfortable, dinner more enjoyable, and painful car rides a thing of the past. Get your egg sitter support cushion for just $39.99. It comes with a free non-slip washable cover and our 10-year comfort guarantee. But wait, call right now and you can get a second cushion. Just pay separate fee. Call now. Call 1-800-232-1564. That's 1-800-232-1564. Call now or go to eggsitter.com. Order now. The ABC7 First Alert weather app just got even better. It's easy to use once you download it. First, tell the app to follow you so you get alerts pinpointed to exactly where you are. Then customize your settings with all the places you go, from the beach to grandmother's house. Get accurate alerts for everyone you care about. You can even pick which weather alerts and categories you want and what they sound like. More ways to customize and more ways to keep your family safe. Download the ABC7 First Alert weather app today. Today at 9 on Suncoast View. We never miss a chance to celebrate. I'm Stephanie Roberts. On Suncoast View, we'll raise a glass with Siesta Key Rum for National Rum Day and celebrate a new version of the Suncoast's award-winning product. Sarasota Opera presents performers you might not expect as they wrap up their special summer season. Plus, all-natural nut butters made right here on the Suncoast. And Morton's Market is in the kitchen. Today at 9 on Suncoast View. Introducing the ABC7 First Alert Weather Tracker. This all new mobile weather lab is just one more way. The team you trust is keeping you ahead of the storms. The ABC7 First Alert Weather Tracker, sponsored by Mr. Sparky, America's on time electrician. First alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. 75 degree air temperature. We have a dew point value coming in at 74. The dew point value slightly higher than yesterday, and you may notice it feels a little sticky out there. We had some light overnight showers near the coastline, helping to bump up that dew point value just a little bit. Uh, mix of sun and clouds this afternoon, and I think we'll probably see a daytime high that tops out very close to where we were yesterday, right around the 90 degree mark. 
And as we move through the morning and into the afternoon, our rain chances will increase, particularly in inland areas where our sea breeze front means the general easterly wind flow that we've developed. And that's when we'll see the explosion of showers and thunderstorms building in them. Yesterday was the, the first day this week, really, that kind of felt like a typical August day. It went through most of the day without a drop of rain and then in the late afternoon showers and thunderstorms started to build in inland areas and if you were lucky enough along the coast you might have gotten one of those showers. You certainly probably got some of the outflow um, air that kind of cooled things off just a little bit so that was nice. Showers again this afternoon kind of parroting what we saw yesterday. Showers building inland and then drifting off to the northwest. Right now, everything's quiet. All the area roadways should be just fine. School bus forecast looks good. Everything should hold till around 3, 4 o'clock this afternoon when the skies will begin to darken. High pressure out in the Atlantic again brings us this southeasterly wind flow. Maybe a little bit more moisture to work with today, so we might see a few more showers around, but generally the same sort of situation. The sea breeze front collides with that easterly wind where they collide at the surface. The air has to go somewhere. Can't go down. You got ground, so it goes up. And when it goes up, that's how you get rain. Moist, warm air rises, cools, condenses, and that's why you get the sea breeze front thunderstorms. Uh, about a 40% chance that the showers that build this afternoon will be thunderstorms. Uh, look for the east wind to continue probably right straight through the weekend. Um, maybe some fewer weekend showers around. Models are continuing to agree on that scenario with a pretty good chance of some drier air moving in for at least half of the weekend, Saturday most likely. And then that west wind is going to return again coming in as early as next week. So taking a look at the future cast, I think it's pretty indicative of what we expect to see. We'll go through most of the morning without any rainfall. Then as we head into the afternoon, sea breeze front builds. We start to see the showers and thunderstorms pop up. And then those showers and thunderstorms move off to the north and to the west. Now the forecast looks like this. Humid air in place now. But watch this. This, this is the water vapor imagery. It shows you the amount of moisture that's in the atmosphere available to produce rain showers right from the ground to the top of the atmosphere where the weather happens. And here, the redder colors are the wetter colors. That's where the moisture is highest. The cooler colors is the drier air. And that drier air is on its way. It's marching and has been in the computer models right straight through the last couple of days. And it looks like on Saturday, we have our best shot of seeing this little intrusion of drier air in upper levels of the atmosphere, reducing our rain chances. Then that'll be followed by more moisture coming our way. Ernesto still around, remaining kind of unchanged over the last 12 hours or so on a trek that'll take it out into the open waters of the Atlantic and maybe eventually up toward Ireland as we head into the weekend. Again, no threat to the United States. Southeast wind coming in at about 10 knots, turning east at about 10 as we head into the afternoon. And the forecast shapes up like this. Seven day forecast shows 91 today, tomorrow, 30% chance of rainfall. We'll look for a 20% chance on Saturday. That's pretty low for August. And then as we head into Sunday, we'll start to bump up those rain chances again as we head into next week. Our winds shift back to the west. You get morning showers near the coast, followed by afternoon showers inland. And that'll hold true right straight into midweek next week. Back to you guys. All right, thanks so much, John. Let's take a look outside and check out your first alert traffic. Your morning commute is not doing too bad this morning, actually. Pretty quiet right there in Manatee County. Not too much going on in the top half of Sarasota County. Those roads are also looking pretty decent. Just a little bit of a hot spot right there on Bee Ridge Road. Starting to get a little busy around this time in the morning. If you're headed farther south, 75 and 41 are also both running pretty decent at this hour. Not too bad out there at 518 with your first alert traffic. A long overdue funeral is now being planned in Kentucky for a Korean War soldier who disappeared back in 1950. As reporter Alexander Cohn tells us, his remains were finally returned home. Army Private Joe Stanton Elmore lost his life fighting in the Korean War. It's a hometown hero coming home. This soldier was missing for 67 years. A moment 83-year-old Mary Bolin never thought she'd see. Now that it's here, we're going to cherish it. Her older brother paid the ultimate sacrifice. I prayed, <laughs> pray all the time, don't ever give up. Mary was 15 years old when he left. There was a big void there, but I had dreams. I still had dreams that he'd come home someday. 
In December of 1950, soldiers showed up to their Kentucky home to report that Elmore was missing. My mother waited and waited. She would look for him every day. And she'd say, now he'll be coming one of these days. They were able to identify him through DNA testing. Me and my sister that was alive at the time, we gave our DNA and we was hoping. You always hope. Now this family has closure. She can finally lay her brother to rest beside his brothers and sisters and her mom and dad. One of the soldier's family members, a Marine, was on the flight and stayed with the remains. Law enforcement officers and motorcyclists escorted the hearse down I-40. While decades have passed, Mary Boland says the pain still lingers, but now she has found peace. I feel closure. I feel completeness. We're going to get to have him a Christian burial, finally, after all these years. Elmore will be laid to rest in Albany, Kentucky, at a family cemetery. Yeah, it's been 68 years, but it's still so raw for that family, I'm Very sure. Very much so, so much uncertainty that's always been out there for yeah, years. Yeah. And it's like, even though you have that back, there's, I'm sure, a part of you that wants to know what exactly happened. But yeah. At least some certainty. Yeah, Korean War, 1950 to 1953. Yes, that's what my dad served in. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. Minus World it War is, II. Yes. Yeah. All right, still to come on Good Morning Suncoast. We're used to talking about when the new version of an Apple iPhone will be out. But are we really ready to talk about an Apple car? Well, we are, I guess. We're going to tell you more about it in today's Tech Bites. And next half hour, students return to new signs in schools in Florida. We'll tell you about the state mandate that requ requires them and some local reaction. But first, thank you, France. Here's a shot of the Statue of Liberty, 1886, out there in the harbor. It is a beautiful shot this morning. That is the Statue of Liberty. This is Good Morning Sun Coast, right here on ABC7. Don't hide it. We know that sometimes emotions just get the better of you, especially at the Honda Summer Spectacular event. And we know getting a deal on the Honda Civic, a 2018 KBB.com Best Buy, can be quite liberating, especially when this stylish Honda Civic comes with sport mode. Yes! Yes! Express what you're feeling at the Honda Summer Spectacular event. I'm happy you're happy. Visit your local Honda dealer and test drive the Honda Civic today. How do you open tough jar lids? Do you try this one? Or this one? Or how about this one? Honey! This is the future. Shouldn't there be a robot for this by now? There is. Introducing RoboTwist, the robotic jar opener that easily twists off even the toughest lids. Just set it down, press the button, and watch it work. First, the RoboStrong vise locks down tight. Then the powerful twisting action unscrews the lid. RoboTwist is yours for the special introductory price of just $19.99. That's right, the robotic jar opener that easily twists off even the toughest lids, all for just $19.99. Whether the jar is big or small, RoboTwist can open them all. Supplies are limited, so don't delay. Here's how to get yours today. Call 1-800-347-1073, that's 1-800-347-1073, or order online at buyrobotwist.com. You know, fortunately, this was my first job out of college, so I was able to uh, come back home and work in my hometown. I wore two hats, I was sports director and I was a news anchor. Uh, I did that for a few years and then decided to go full-time into news. Well, I love our team here at ABC7. We have a great mix, and it really is a great mix of, of personalities, of experience that meshes really well into a really strong team. I'm Scott Dennis, and I'm here for you. You now have the power to prioritize your Facebook feed and get local news and information from the team you trust. Go to the ABC7 Sarasota page on Facebook, give us a like, then click following and choose See First. That's it. Customize even more by choosing notifications. Choose breaking news, posts, live videos, anything you want to see in real time. Take control of your newsfeed and stay connected to what's happening in your community with ABC7 on Facebook. 
everyone's buzzing about Suncoast View, live at 9 on ABC7. I like watching the Suncoast View. I like the Suncoast View. The cooking segments, I love the recipes, the theater segments are terrific. Join Stephanie Roberts, Linda Carson, and Joey Panic on Suncoast View for hot topics, everyday issues, celebrities, food, fashion, fitness, and everything in between. Nothing is off limits. They're just fun. For smart, fun talk in the morning, watch Suncoast View, live at 9, weekdays on ABC7. Welcome back. It is 524. Wait a minute. How do we just make this jump? Experts are predicting when we're going to be seeing an Apple car and Amazon's Alexa is going to college. The story is in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, a new prediction about the Apple car. Yeah, a well-connected analyst says he expects it to roll out sometime between 2023 and 2025. He's calling the car Apple's next star product, which could revolutionize the auto industry. No comment from Apple. And LA Dodger fans can now look forward to a new way to get to Dodger Stadium. Perhaps Elon Musk says his construction company is going to build a nearly four-mile-long tunnel from Hollywood to the stadium. He says a high-speed ride will make the trip and just four minutes Oof. and students at st louis university say hello to alexa the school has produced a video promoting how every student dorm room and apartment on campus will have its own amazon echo dot that will run on amazon's alexa for business platform the devices will be modified to answer only school related questions oh no pizza all right those are your tech bites tech bites sponsored by lyrica to most people, I look like most people. But on the inside, I feel chronic, widespread pain. Fibromyalgia may be invisible to others, but my pain is real. Fibromyalgia is thought to be caused by overactive nerves. Lyrica is believed to calm these nerves. I'm glad my doctor prescribed Lyrica. For some, Lyrica delivers effective relief for moderate to even severe fibromyalgia pain and improves function. Lyrica may cause serious allergic reactions, suicidal thoughts, or actions. Tell your doctor right away if you have these, new or worse depression, unusual changes in mood or behavior, swelling, trouble breathing, rash, hives, blisters, muscle pain with fever, tired feeling, or blurry vision. Common side effects, dizziness, sleepiness, weight gain, swelling of hands, legs, and feet. Don't drink alcohol while taking Lyrica. Don't drive or use machinery until you know how Lyrica affects you. Those who've had a drug or alcohol problem may be more likely to misuse Lyrica. With less pain, I can do more with my family. Talk to your doctor today. See if Lyrica can help. If you're looking for the perfect trip that allows you to spend quality time with the family, then discover the great outdoors on an Alabama black belt adventure. Create unforgettable memories while hunting, fishing, or biking and hiking. Or play the Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail, now celebrating 25 years. And while you're here, enjoy the flavors of the black belt. Book your adventure at our lodges or stay in the Renaissance Montgomery Hotel and Spa. Start planning an Alabama Black Belt adventure today. Every child follows a path in life. For many, that path will lead them to a door, a door that gives them a place to grow, to learn, to belong, a place to forge their future. Because while many doors open, these doors transform. They did for us. Support your local boys and girls clubs. Great futures start here. It's summer on the Sun Coast, and you know what that means. It's Friday Fest season. And you are invited. Sit back, relax, and enjoy some of today's most popular country songs. Mixed with a healthy dose of hits from pop, rock, dance, and the blues, August 17th with Sarasota's Rebel Heart. With high-energy music, food trucks, beverage vendors, and more, it's the perfect spot to enjoy our summer sunset over the bay. For more information, go to this number or go to mysuncoast.com slash Friday Fest. Hunger is a growing problem in our area, and a huge number of Suncoast residents are suffering in silence. It could be your coworker, your child's classmate, or your friend fighting to secure their next meal. But you can help. ABC7 is partnering with local organizations to help feed the Suncoast. Go to mysuncoast.com slash hunger to join the fight. Help us. Help the hungry.
Hurricane season is here, and so is the official Suncoast Hurricane Guide from ABC7. This essential resource arms you with vital information you need to protect your family and property when severe weather threatens the Suncoast, including how to create your readiness plan and survival kit, shelter locations, what to do with pets, and important phone numbers. Visit mysuncoast.com and download the official Suncoast Hurricane Guide from ABC7. Brought to you by Batteries Plus, the Florida Lottery, and Sarasota Glass and Mirror. Designers do it with style. Tell me what's going on here. Because Why you don't like my hair? The Mark and Mandy Show. In-depth design ideas. What is up with the tuck tape here? Let's cover it up. Amazing beauty and fashion tips. So Halle Berry has amazing skin. She Her secret it. is coffee ground. No. Delicious recipes. Today I'm going to show you a special dish that is sure to please that special someone in your life. Watch the Mark and Mandy Show right here on your favorite channel. <laughs> You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast at 5.30. After allegations of a massive cover-up of sexual abuse in Pennsylvania Catholic churches, this morning the Vatican responds, kind of. Plus the controversial signs Florida students found around campus when they came back to school this week. And Reebok is rolling out a new style of footwear and it is all eco-friendly, made entirely from natural products. Even corn, this strange story. <laughs> We've got it for you, plus your Thursday forecast right now on Good Morning Sun They Coast. dissolve in the rain and they're- They're good. biodegradable. If you forget your lunch, just eat your sneaker. Eat your food, right? I mean, I think it's a thing, it could right. work. Yeah. All right, over to John Scalzi for a look at your Thursday forecast. Milk, some fresh fruit, could be good. <laughs> so we're looking at- <laughs> Oh, that, oh, got to get that mind out of my mind. Uh, we're looking at uh, some pretty quiet conditions across the state of Florida right now. Like yesterday, I think weather is going to be very similar. We'll see the sea breeze build in the afternoon in response to daytime heating. We'll watch an easterly wind flow collide, and we'll get showers and thunderstorms that build inland and drift to the coast. Though right now, everything's quiet. A little bit more humid out there, though, this morning. You'll feel that as you walk out the door. Temperatures generally in the mid-70s inland. A little bit warmer as you get closer to the coast. We're looking at probably a couple of degree warmer temperature most everywhere this morning compared to 24 hours ago. And again, we're looking at about a 10% chance of showers through the morning hours, if that, followed by much better chances for rain showers inland in the afternoon. That's about it for me. Back to you guys. All right, talk to you again. There's the traffic right now in Manatee County. A little bit of a build up there on the bend where Cortez swings down toward or toward up toward uh, Bradenton. Otherwise clear in Manatee County. Checking farther south now. Here is the situation right now. A little Bee Ridge Road congestion eastbound from, oh, say Tuttle in toward 41. Otherwise clear. And then our final map for the south. Nothing to speak of at 532. Well, it was a shocking 900 page grand jury report that found 300 Catholic priests in Pennsylvania had sexually abused over a thousand children over a period of decades. Finally, the Vatican is now speaking out, sort of. CNN's Barbie Nado explains. The Vatican has been characteristically quiet about the latest clerical abuse allegations in the United States. This time, those allegations come out of Pennsylvania, where a grand jury issued a stunning report in which around a thousand children were said to be abused by 300 priests over seven decades. Those allegations were substantiated by emotional testimony and documents and that show a clear cover-up in the moving around of predator priests through the various dioceses of Pennsylvania. Here in Rome, the Vatican has chosen not to make an official comment. Instead, they point to a statement made by the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. That's the leading organization representing the hierarchy of the American church. And in that statement, they express their sorrow for the sins and omissions and the pain to those victims, but they don't accept any culpability for crimes or misdemeanors as laid out by that Pennsylvania grand jury. And coming up at the 6 a.m. hour, we're going to tell you how one of those priests actually ended up coming to Sarasota. Supporters of taking a closer look at offshore drilling in the Gulf rallied this week at the state capitol in Tallahassee. A bipartisan group of politicians, business groups, and national petroleum interests is promoting access to domestic offshore fuel. Environmentalists have their doubts. Here's both sides. In Florida, we have millions of jobs that are dependent on tourism, that are dependent on having clean beaches. And the bottom line is that it would be irresponsible to put that at risk. 
We're not talking, by the way, uh, today about drill, baby, drill. We're talking about explore, baby, explore. Let's find out uh, what energy resources we have off the coast of Florida. And for the record, Governor Rick Scott and Area Congressman Vernon Buchanan are both opposed to offshore drilling. This morning, a Venice construction worker is recovering after falling through the roof of a storage unit while on the job. Venice Fire Department say they got to that storage unit near the Plaza Mexico restaurant early this morning or yesterday morning. They say they found the man lying on the floor half conscious. Now, witnesses say he was walking on the roof when he suddenly fell 15 feet down into the building. He was then taken to the hospital in a helicopter. No word yet on his current condition. Overseas now caught on camera. Firefighters and local residents rescued a three-year-old boy who was trapped under rubble after a landslide in southwest China this week. The landslide happened near a church. The young boy was sent to the hospital as a precaution, but luckily has no serious injuries. Senator Bernie Sanders is coming to Tampa to help campaign for Andrew Gillum tomorrow. Now, Gillum, of course, is the mayor of Tallahassee and is also running for the Democratic nomination for the Florida governor. Sanders and Gillum are both holding a rally tomorrow morning in downtown Tampa at Armature Works right there on the riverfront before they head off to Orlando for another rally later on in the day. Florida students returned to class this week to find In God We Trust signs displayed on the campus. It's part of a new state mandate that says all public schools must display the state motto in every school and district building. These signs hang in the lobby of each building, but they're only temporary because the district is making permanent ones that look very similar to what's hanging up right now. I personally think that we should keep it there because um, this country was founded on those morals. I can see if people do have an issue with it. I personally do not have a problem with it. I don't really practice any religion, but I could see how it could cause any problems with anyone with conflicting um, beliefs or what. And in Manatee County, the district has decided to print out the state seal, which already includes the phrase, in God we trust, and hang those around each district building. Well, the latest casualty of the red tide outbreak, this month's Friday Fest at the Van Wezel has been canceled. Now, of course, the Van Wezel sits right next to Sarasota Bay, which is still being impacted by red tide. The event was scheduled to take place tomorrow night, but there's been no word yet on exactly when or whether it will be rescheduled. And we were going to host that, too. We were. Baseball fans can attend games for free right now at Ed Smith Stadium in Sarasota. The stadium is hosting the Baltimore Orioles Gulf Coast League. It gives recently drafted or signed players their first experience in pro baseball. There are four games left this season right there on your screen. The stadium is at the corner of 12th Street and Tuttle Avenue. Well, it may look like any other Reebok tennis shoe on the outside, but it's what's on the inside that makes this one special. It is a new eco-friendly tennis shoe made from cotton and corn. Uh -huh. Seriously, they're even biodegradable. Now they are available online for both men and women and then the pair will run you about 95 bucks. Well, gluten free at least. Corn. <laughs> Good for breakfast. Delta wants more friendly faces in the friendly skies. The airline plans to hire more than 1,000 flight attendants next year. Applicants must be at least 21 years old, have a high school or GED. But these jobs are in high demand. Get this, last year Delta received more than 270,000 applications for less than 2,000 jobs. Wow. All right, a piece of World War II history has been found just off the coast of Alaska. Part of the USS Abner Reed lay below the surface of the Bering Sea for almost 75 years. Now, that destroyer sank shortly after it was ripped apart in an explosion, killing 71 Navy sailors on board. Now, the crew was able to save the ship at the time, but the sailors' remains have now been lost since 1943. And switching gears over to entertainment, singer Bruno Mars is hitting the road and is taking further acts on the road with him. He just announced Sierra, Boys to Men, yes. Charlie Wilson and LMI will be joining him on his 24 karat Magic World Tour that is kicking off this fall. It all comes after Cardi B dropped out of the tour so she could spend more time with her newborn daughter. Ellen DeGeneres' clothes are coming to Walmart. Her actual clothes? Well, maybe. <laughs> the talk show hostess's new fashion line makes its debut next month. The casual collection, named EV1, is denim-based and features jeans, shoes, and shirts. No item will cost more than $30. There you go. All right, I'm intrigued. Still ahead, we'll show you how business leaders are joining forces against Red Tide in Manatee County. We'll have a live update for you.
And an Ohio man who had been unable to walk his daughter down the aisle is now thanking technology for allowing him to still be a part of her big day. We're going to have their story straight ahead, but first. Yeah, no tuxedo required there. No stretchy pants. <laughs> you like <laughs> your outfit on weekends? Yes. 539 right now. Beautiful shot there. That is not an artist rendering. <laughs> Just saw some sheet lightning off there in the looking south, John Skulls. Is that a possibility? Yeah, out there in the Gulf. Yeah, yeah we got there it some is. stuff going on out there. Not seeing much over land right now, though, that's for sure. School bus forecast looks good. We're talking about a 77 degree temperature, mostly dry skies for your school bus stops. And then after school temperatures, probably warm once again with building afternoon showers in inland areas drifting off to the north and to the west. Beach, if you're heading there, we still have, of course, red tide around, and we'll give you that red tide update coming up in about uh, 15 minutes here. Otherwise, 88 degrees, mostly sunny skies with a west wind. Look for a UV index coming in at about an 11 today. That's high. Complete forecast in a minute. Today, everyone is looking for carpeting that lasts longer. G Freed has you covered with Karistan. With a legacy of quality and integrity, we provide you with a huge selection of Karistan carpets with exclusive lifetime limited warranties. All installed by our highly skilled, highly knowledgeable team. Come ask us why Karistan is the best and most durable. G Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. We're losing exotic animals on a daily basis and the ones that we have in captivity are really the ambassadors for their wild counterparts. I'm Clayton Rosaire from the Big Cat Habitat and Gulf Coast Sanctuary, housing over 150 exotic animals that needed a great home. And if you love animals, please help them. Do it locally. Support your local no-kill shelters, your local wild animal sanctuaries. Make a difference where you can. Investigate TV tackles the tough topics. What happened to my life was awful. When your health is compromised, we investigate. They are really drug dealers and in white coats. Corporate greed exposed. How do you trust them to run this program? The powerful held accountable with in-depth journalism led by award-winning journalist Lee Zurich. We're your watchdog. Search Investigate TV on your Roku device. Download it now. Northland Outdoors is about so much more than the biggest fish or the hottest hunting spots. All across the Northland, there are amazing people with incredible stories to tell. We're gonna find those stories and share them with everyone. Join us each and every week as we explore the Northland and experience some of the most exciting outdoor adventures in the country right here in our own backyard. This is Northland Outdoors. All across America, there are kids going hungry. It sounds crazy, but it's real. It's also a problem we're fixing. Kids who rely on school meals need help in the summer. That means neighborhood meal sites that are easy to get to and free for every kid. When you make breakfast part of a school day, a lot more kids get the chance to eat. These programs work. Over the past few years, one-third fewer children in the United States are facing hunger. Let's make no kid hungry a reality. Are you a food lover, restaurant goer, or home cook? Then check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC 7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, and helpful step-by-step -step videos. And you'll love the restaurant guide with direct links to your favorite Suncoast eateries. Whether you're cooking in or dining out, whet your appetite with tasty tips from Chef Judy at MySuncoast.com slash dining. Now your ABC7 First Alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. So we have a 75 degree temperature right now. Dew point value coming in at 74. Obviously there's no sun out there. That icon is being misrepresented. Uh, but we do have a fairly clear sky. A little bit of leftover debris cloud around from uh, some earlier showers overnight. And an east wind well established will continue on through the afternoon. That east wind will eventually collide with our sea breeze front and bring us increasing chances of afternoon rain once the sea breeze gets going. Until then, our rain chances are minimal, so I don't think we'll have a big 
problem with any kind of rain showers at the school buses or any kind of uh, problems with your morning commute. Should be pretty well, pretty dry roads out there until we get till about three o'clock. That's when we'll start to see the showers building east of the interstate. They'll be coming up at you from the southeast, drifting off to the northwest. We'll look for that rain chance to start to decrease as we get into seven, eight, nine o'clock. We'll watch it drop down to probably about 10% or so. There are the showers yesterday, building inland, moving out into Gulf waters as they lifted off toward Pinellas County and uh, Hillsborough County. The same sort of situation again this afternoon. Uh, you did see some pops of lightning out there, and then indeed they are some thunderstorm activity, but it's well out in Gulf waters. But uh, it is producing a kind of a beautiful little light show if you're along the coastline and looking out to the uh, southwest. So we have across our region quiet conditions, nothing uh, happening in terms of weather that could cause your commute to be delayed. High pressure, our dominant weather feature out in the Atlantic, continues to bring us a southeasterly wind flow. Now, I think today we'll probably see a few more showers around in the afternoon. It won't be a big deal, but there will be maybe an additional 10% shower activity. Thunderstorms building along the sea breeze front with the collision between our sea breeze and that easterly wind creating the uplift necessary to produce those showers. They'll drift off again to the northwest. So wind conditions are going to be out of the east again today. We'll have fewer weekend showers around. I think as a little bit of drier air moves in from the Atlantic side and we'll look for the west wind pattern that we had earlier on this week that actually could uh, exasperate perhaps a little bit the um, the amount of red tide toxin in the air that could return as early as Tuesday of next week as high pressure again builds a little bit further to our south and encourages that west wind flow. Future cast shows quiet conditions across the area this morning, followed by afternoon rain showers building on the sea breeze front. And I think that's a pretty accurate de depiction. Maybe they will linger a little bit longer into the evening hours, probably till around 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and then kind of dissipate. I don't think we'll see much in the way of rainfall tomorrow morning. So Ernesto remains pretty much unchanged. 70, uh, excuse me, a 40 mile an hour storm. It has about another 12 to 24 hours left to intensify or strengthen in some degree, and then it'll lift off to the northeast. It'll probably lose its tropical characteristics, and then it'll head up toward, most likely, up toward the uh, uh, Great Britain area. Maybe Ireland impacted with some 40 mile an hour gale winds as it kind of morphs with a uh, frontal boundary that'll be located there. Red tide status kind of looks like this. We'll have a general wind coming in off Gulf waters. We'll have uh, it looks like some increased amounts of red tide toxin in the air, according to the spotters who have their noses in the air out there, uh, especially in our northern beaches. So we look for a southeast wind coming in at about 10 knots and the forecast calling for daytime highs today, about 91 or so. Same thing again tomorrow. A little bit less rain chance as we head into Saturday and Sunday, and then rain chances return as we head into next week. Back to you. Thank you, John. Let's go ahead and take a look outside. Check out our first alert traffic. Starting off in Manatee County, those roads are not looking too bad out there just yet. A little slowdown right there on State Road 70, but other than that, not too much going on in that area. In Sarasota County, those roads are also looking okay for the most part. Couple bumps and delays, but pretty normal for around this time of the morning. And if you're headed a little bit farther south into uh, maybe the Port Charlotte area, 75 and 41, both running pretty smooth so far this morning at 547. Well, red tide has not only impacted sea life, the beaches, but also hotels and restaurants along the coast. Our Marla Spence joins us now live from a restaurant where business owners will be gathering later on this morning in Bradenton. Marla? Hey guys, I'm live here at Swordfish Grill and Tiki Bar. This is where some restaurant owners will be meeting to stand in solidarity against the toxic algae bloom. Now, many businesses and restaurants near the Gulf has seen a decline in business over the last few weeks due to red tide. We're told between 30 to 60 percent of sales. Just yesterday, business owners and local politicians met to talk about the effects of red tide on businesses. Now, they also met to make sure everyone on the Sun Coast is aware restaurants are open despite red tide. Now this is something business owners and local politicians plan to do all week long. We spoke to Bob Slicker, the general manager of Swordfish Grill and Tiki Bar, just like other business managers and owners. He is hoping the worst of red tide has passed despite the algae bloom that's been plaguing the Gulf waters. Slicker and other restaurants are open for business. 
We're still all in business, and you know, we all have air conditions and inside, so if red tide was a problem, you could still come out and eat. No one is serving bad fish. All of our fish is fresh. We catch our own fish over 10 miles out there. Now, many business owners will be meeting right here at 4 o'clock this afternoon to keep the conversation going and also to talk about the negative effects that the red tide has had on their business. Reporting live in Manatee County, I'm Marla Spence for ABC7, your Suncoast News. All right, thank you so much, Marla. Well, almost as good as the real thing. An Ohio man is in the hospital and wasn't able to walk his daughter down the aisle on her wedding day. But... Thanks to technology, he did get to be a part of her big day. Kevin Landers has her story. This is a story about a 100-year-old bond and an unbreakable bond between a daughter and her dad. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Sorry. Um, he's just an amazing guy, and I'm very blessed for him to be my dad. Janae Hogger's wedding day had everything except her dad. For him not to be able to walk me down the aisle, it was very difficult because it's always been his dream to do that. Janae's father, Steve, remodeled this old hay barn, including this third-story catwalk, in hopes one day one of his four daughters would be married here. But a medical condition prevented that dream from happening. Well, sort of. Steve was in the so hospital much. with severe that pancreatitis. There were thoughts of me not even getting married, and I, it was very hard because, obviously, I had the perfect man. I was I still wanted to get married and talk to my dad, and he told me, you, you're going to be married no matter what, whether I'm there or not. And um, uh, sorry. On the day of the wedding, she surprised her dad at the hospital so the two could share a father-daughter dance. There was a lot of tears at first, <laughs> and he just kept saying how beautiful I was and how gorgeous and and then he told me that I was his Carrie Underwood. <laughs> but there was more. Using an iPad, Dad was able to watch the wedding from his hospital bed from a live camera inside the family barn. Yeah. What do you think it meant to him? Everything. <laughs> he just kept saying he was just so thankful that we were there. And when it was time to give away his daughter, technology answered. He actually said her mother and I over the iPad. So made it special that's for sure august 11th 2018 won't mean a lot to most of us but to this bride and her family i'm so thankful for today's technology technology that allowed a dad to walk down the virtual aisle with his daughter and left a father-daughter bond unbroken we have an unbelievable relationship <laughs> why we do the whole that, uh, it's so sweet it's a beautiful story oh my and he was able to say her mother and i give her away yeah from the hospital room miles away he said that and they heard him and uh, i love the dance in the room before the wedding i know technology is such a beautiful thing yes we have stories sometimes of when it goes yeah. wrong but man this one went right right there <laughs> even i got the chills i that know one. <laughs> no crying in morning tv dang it now there is <laughs> 550 tool update the day's top news headlines after this all right, but first, here's a look out of our tower cam. A beautiful morning in the making. You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast right here on ABC7. Find out first at 4 on the Sun Coast with ABC7 News at 4. ABC7 News at 4 starts with a detailed look at your first alert weather forecast to help you plan and prepare. We give you a fresh, fast-paced rundown of the day's top stories and videos, including breaking news, live updates, and traffic hotspots, all at a new, more convenient time. Find out first at 4, weekdays on ABC7. <laughs> WWSB ABC7 is an equal opportunity employer, and we're looking for qualified people to join our dynamic team. For a list of current openings and to apply online, 
visit www.mysuncoast.com slash contact slash employment. If you're a motivated team player and you want a rewarding career in a fun, fast-paced working environment, WWSB ABC7 could be the perfect fit for you. Check out our list of openings now. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. I will always finish first. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. I will never accept defeat. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. I will never quit. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. I will never leave a fallen comrade. Learn more at nationalguard.com. It's rainy season on the Sun Coast. Storms can pop up at a moment's notice. Sometimes it's just rain. Sometimes it's much worse. When there's the potential for severe weather, you need to know fast. Trust ABC7 First Alert Weather to get you the information you need right away. We focus on the storms that impact where you live, and we're committed to alerting you with important information as soon as we get it. When severe weather strikes, trust ABC7 First Alert Weather. We're here for you. We've all heard how military veterans adjusting to the civilian world may have certain issues. 30. 70. If only everyone had this issue. No matter what challenge they face, Easter Seals is here for America's veterans. Here are your headlines. The airport police chief in Sarasota has resigned amidst an internal investigation. SRQ officials were investigating James Carlino after a complaint of misconduct. Plus, another casualty of Red Tide. Friday Fest, scheduled for tomorrow night at the Van Wazel, has now been canceled. No word yet on when or if it'll be rescheduled. Thousands of Elvis fans are in Memphis this week. Elvis died on this day 41 years ago at the age of 42. And the conspiracy theories has not oh, stopped since on. then. Right now, over to John Scalzi for one last look at your forecast. Looks good for us today. I think we'll see uh, a little bit warmer temperatures through the morning hours, a little bit more humid. You'll notice that, I think, as you head out the door. Same rain pattern, though, as yesterday. Expect those afternoon showers and thunderstorms to build inland. And it's calm in the tropics right straight through the weekend. Back to you. All right. Thank you, John. Talk to you again soon. We'll take you outside. One last shot of the uh, tower cam. Look at the background there. That's Mother Nature. It is Mother Nature working her magic on this Thursday morning. A full hour of news is straight ahead right here on ABC7.